My name is Amanda, a name that means deserving to be loved, yet it seems as though life has constantly tested the worthiness of that love. I'm a single mother of two, juggling life's many demands while trying to keep the memory of their father alive, even though he abandoned us for a younger, less attractive woman. I also care for my elderly mother, a woman once vibrant with life but now withering away under the harsh hands of time. I work at a large, prestigious company downtown. Every morning, I wake up early, get my kids, Lucy and Max, ready for school, ensure my mother is comfortable, and then rush out the door to catch the bus. The company pays me well, thankfully, which helps me support my family and cover my mother's increasing medical bills. It's a lot of pressure, I won't lie, but my children's smiles and my mother's gratitude make it all worthwhile. Days roll into nights and the cycle repeats itself. I remember when I used to have help when their father was around. We were a team, a family, now it's just me, standing alone against the world. He was bewitched, I once told Lucy, who'd asked why her dad left. I didn't have the heart to tell her the truth, that he'd left us for a younger, less deserving woman. Every night, I tuck my children in bed, kiss their foreheads, and whisper a prayer. My mother, once so strong and independent, now needs my assistance for the simplest tasks. Work is a different battlefield. It's competitive, stressful, and made even more complicated by my manager, Richard. Ever since my divorce, he's taken an uncalled for interest in me. He's a middle-aged man with a wife and kids, yet he never misses an opportunity to slide into my space. His leering eyes follow me around the office, making my skin crawl. My desk is a neat corner, cluttered only with pictures of my children and mother. As I work, I am always aware of Richard's intrusive gaze. One day, as I was sifting through some reports, I felt his looming presence. Amanda, I was wondering if you would like to join me for dinner tonight. He asked, his voice oozing insincere charm. Richard, I'm very busy with my family. I really don't have time for anything else, I responded, trying to keep my voice steady. You're always busy, Amanda. You should make time for yourself too, he retorted, an undercurrent of annoyance in his voice. Believe me, Richard, if I had time, I'd spend it with my children. I must get back to work now, I said, dismissing him with a curt nod. He left with a grumble, but not without a lingering glance that left me feeling uncomfortable. This was my life now, a constant balancing act between my responsibilities at home and my obligation to maintain a safe working environment for myself. But I remain strong, not just for myself, but for my family who relies on me. For the children who need a mother, for the mother who needs a daughter. Every day, I stare life in the face and say, I can handle this, not because I'm unafraid, but because I have no other choice. On a typically busy Tuesday, I was caught in the whirlwind of paperwork, trying to keep my focus steady. Richard approached, his face holding that usual unwanted smirk. Amanda, could you come to my office for a moment? I'd like to discuss your recent performance. He gestured towards his closed office door, his voice holding a tone I wasn't fond of. I nodded, forcing a professional smile on my face. Inside his office, he gestured for me to take a seat opposite him. The atmosphere was tense, and my mind was screaming red flags. Amanda, I've been observing you for a while now. You're hardworking and very dedicated, he began, stressing the last word unnaturally. Thank you, Richard, I said curtly, feeling an uncomfortable chill. Is there anything you wanted to discuss about my work? He leaned back in his chair, taking a moment before responding. Well, it's more about you personally than professionally. You see, I've been watching you, Amanda. After your divorce, I realize you're a woman who deserves appreciation and love. His words hung heavily in the air, making the atmosphere stifling. Taken aback by his audacious confession, I took a moment to collect my thoughts. Richard, I'm here to work, not to find love. Especially not in the workplace. I hope you understand that. Undeterred by my words, he leaned forward, his face unsettlingly close. Amanda, we're both mature adults. We know how life works. We deserve a little fun, don't we? With my heart pounding, I rose from the chair. Richard, this is inappropriate. I would appreciate it if we could keep our interactions strictly professional. My firmness seemed to irritate him, but it was better to set the boundaries now than to encourage his advances. Amanda, don't act naive. I can see that you're lonely. I'm offering you company. Richard, I responded, my voice a steel blade, my personal life is none of your concern. And as for your offer, I am neither lonely nor desperate. I have my children and my mother to accompany me, and that is enough for me. He looked taken aback for a moment, 
but then his features hardened, and he leaned back. Very well, Amanda, have it your way. I hope it doesn't affect your performance here at the office. It wasn't a threat, but it felt dangerously close to one. For the rest of the day, his words echoed in my head, adding an extra layer of stress to my already heavy load. But I was determined not to let his unwanted advances shake me. I was there to work, to support my family, not to entertain my boss's whims. It was a Friday afternoon, and the weekend was within reach. The office was buzzing with that characteristic end-of-the-week energy. As I was packing up my things, Richard approached me once again. Amanda, are you heading home? He asked, his eyes scanning over my desk. Yes, Richard, it's been a long week, I replied, hoping he wouldn't propose another dinner meeting. But before he could respond, my attention was diverted to the office lobby. My younger sister, Grace, had just entered the office, looking radiant and vibrant as always. Grace, despite being younger, had always been the more glamorous one, carrying an air of beauty and grace wherever she went. She was engaged to a wonderful man who loved her dearly. Who is that, Amanda? Richard asked, his eyes glued to Grace, his expression different from the usual. He was clearly smitten. That's my sister, Grace, I said, a chill running down my spine as I realized the possible implications. Richard nodded slowly, his eyes never leaving Grace. Well, she's definitely got the family beauty. He said, his tongue more akin to a leer than a compliment. Feeling uncomfortable, I quickly grabbed my things and went over to Grace, hoping to shield her from Richard's gaze. I introduced them, and Richard, ever the gentleman on the surface, greeted her with a charming smile. Pleasure to meet you, Grace. Amanda never told us she had such a beautiful sister. He said, his eyes greedily taking in Grace's beauty. Grace, oblivious to Richard's intentions, replied with a polite smile, Nice to meet you too, Richard. I've heard a lot about you from Amanda. Once the pleasantries were over, Grace and I quickly left the office. But as I glanced back, I noticed Richard still watching us, a predatory glint in his eyes. It sent a shiver down my spine. I knew at that moment that things were about to get a lot more complicated. That night, lying awake in bed, I couldn't shake off the image of Richard's leer. It was obvious he was infatuated with Grace, and given his previous advances toward me, I feared the worst. The battle I was fighting had just escalated, and this time, it was not just about me. I needed to protect Grace from becoming a victim of Richard's unwanted affections. As Monday dawned, a sense of dread loomed over me. I wasn't just going to work now, I was stepping into a battleground. I knew Richard would not have forgotten about Grace, and my apprehension was confirmed as soon as I reached my office. Amanda, we need to talk, Richard said, ushering me into his office before I could even settle in. As I sat down, I braced myself for the conversation. I felt a knot tightening in my stomach as he began to speak. Amanda, I haven't been able to stop thinking about your sister since Friday. She is, captivating. I swallowed hard, trying to keep my emotions in check. Richard, my sister is engaged. She loves her fiancé very much, I don't think. He cut me off with a wave of his hand. Amanda, love can be fleeting. I am willing to offer her a secure future. I can give her everything she wants. Richard, she's already happy, I argued, my voice shaking. Let me be the judge of that, he responded harshly. I am planning to divorce my wife. I want Grace to be my next wife. And, you, Amanda, you are going to help me. The audacity of his words left me stunned. What if I refuse? He leaned back, a cold, smug smile on his face. Then you can start looking for a new job. Tears welled up in my eyes, but I refused to let them fall. I wouldn't give him the satisfaction of seeing me weak. You can't force me into this, Richard. This is not right. He shrugged nonchalantly. I can, and I will, Amanda. You have a week to make up your mind. The rest of the day passed in a blur. I felt sick to my stomach, torn between my duty to protect Grace and the need to secure my job to provide for my family. Richard had put me in an impossible situation, one that threatened to shatter the peace of our lives. The week that Richard gave me to decide was undoubtedly the hardest week of my life. Each night, I found myself unable to sleep, tears soaking my pillow as I pondered the terrible decision I was forced to make. I'd look at my sleeping children, their innocent faces unaware of the turmoil their mother was in, and my heart would ache. One evening, after putting my children to bed, I found myself sitting alone in my room a torrent of tears streaming down my face. The weight of the decision I had to make was unbearable, and I found myself sobbing uncontrollably. 
Just as I was wiping away my tears, Grace walked in. I quickly put on a brave face, trying to hide my red, puffy eyes. Amanda, are you okay? She asked, her face etched with worry. Yes, Grace, I lied, trying to sound as convincing as I could. Just some stress at work. Grace was always so perceptive, and I saw doubt flicker in her eyes. But she nodded, choosing to believe my lie for now. You know, you can always talk to me about anything, right? I know, Grace, and I appreciate it. I just need some rest. Later that night, as I lay in bed, I couldn't shake off the guilt of lying to Grace. But I also knew that telling her the truth would drag her into this ugly mess, and I couldn't let that happen. The pain of keeping the truth from her was unbearable, but not as unbearable as the thought of her getting hurt. Every day, Richard would ask me for updates, his impatience growing. Amanda, have you spoken to Grace? He would ask every morning. Not yet, Richard, I would answer, buying myself more time. Each day felt like a ticking bomb, the pressure intensifying as the deadline approached. I had decided to speak with my best friend, Mary. She was my confidant, someone I could trust implicitly. I called her up, inviting her over for coffee. I felt a strange sense of relief as I finally admitted, Mary, I'm in trouble. She listened intently as I narrated my predicament. Her face turned into a grimace as I described Richard's outrageous demand and the impossible situation he put me in. Unbelievable, she muttered, shaking her head in disgust. Richard has always been an egotistical jerk, but this, this is a new low, even for him. I don't know what to do, Mary, I confessed, my voice barely above a whisper. I can't lose my job, but I can't sacrifice Grace either. Mary sat silent for a moment, deep in thought. Then, she looked at me with determination in her eyes. Amanda, you need to stand against this. We must expose Richard. But how? I asked, feeling a glimmer of hope. His wife. We could tell his wife, Mary suggested. The thought had never occurred to me, but the more I thought about it, the more sense it made. Richard's wife, Linda, was a kind, respectable woman. She deserved to know the truth about her husband. But Mary, I don't even know Linda. How could I approach her with such a damning accusation about her husband? Social media, Mary proposed. Connect with her there and request a meeting. The truth is on your side, Amanda. She deserves to know, and you deserve justice. My heart pounded as I considered Mary's plan. It was risky, but what other choice did I have? If there was a chance to expose Richard and sake my job, I had to take it. And so, with a deep breath, I decided to confront the situation head-on. For the sake of my family, for Grace, and for my own dignity. In the quiet of my room, I stared at Linda's profile on my laptop screen, my heart pounding. She looked elegant, warm, and deeply kind. It pained me to know that I was about to shatter her world. Taking a deep breath, I composed a message. Dear Linda, I hope this message finds you well. My name is Amanda, and I work with your husband, Richard. There's something important I need to discuss with you. It's of a delicate nature. Could we perhaps meet for coffee? To my surprise, she responded quickly, agreeing to meet the following afternoon. The next day, sitting across from Linda at a quiet cafe, I felt a knot in my stomach. I watched her as she sipped her coffee, her face exuding kindness and poise. Amanda, what is it that you wanted to discuss? Linda asked, breaking the silence. Linda, I started, my voice barely above a whisper, it's about Richard. What about Richard? She asked, her face immediately clouding over with concern. I took a deep breath and narrated the whole ordeal from Richard's initial harassment, his infatuation with Grace, to his atrocious ultimatum. Linda listened in silence, her face pale. When I was done, I looked at her apologetically, bracing myself for her reaction. To my surprise, Linda didn't explode or break down. Instead, she was eerily calm. Amanda, she began, her voice steady, thank you for telling me this. Linda, I. Richard has betrayed me before, she interrupted, her eyes hardening. I've always been a forgiving person, Amanda, but not this time. This time, he will face the consequences. I stared at her in shock. I hadn't expected this. Linda, as it turns out, was not the meek, clueless wife I had assumed her to be. She revealed that she was the majority shareholder of the company, having founded it and later handed over the reins to Richard. Linda, I didn't know. Few people do, Amanda, she replied, a bitter smile gracing her lips. But now it's time Richard is reminded of who truly holds power. This ends now. He has pushed us too far. 
The following day, the office was buzzing with an unusual energy. The cause? Linda, the seldom-seen wife of the manager, had arrived unannounced. Little did they know, the stage was set for a grand confrontation. I watched as Linda walked with an aura of command, a tiger ready to pounce. She marched into Richard's office without a second's hesitation, closing the door behind her. Richard, taken aback, could barely utter a greeting before Linda cut him off. We need to talk, Richard, she said, her voice icy cold. Caught off guard, Richard stammered, Linda, what a surprise, what brings you here? Without wasting any more time, Linda said, it's about Amanda. Richard's eyes flickered towards me as I stepped into the room. The realization slowly dawned upon him. Amanda? He asked, feigning ignorance. Yes, Richard, about Amanda and her sister, Linda said, her voice steely. I know everything. Richard paled, his confident facade wavering. I, I don't know what you're talking about, Linda, he stammered. Don't lie, Richard. Linda shouted, the veneer of calm finally cracking. Amanda has told me everything. How you've been harassing her. How you're trying to force her to end her sister's engagement. And for what? So you can betray me again. As Linda accused him, I watched as Richard squirmed under her scrutiny. He tried to deny it, to deflect, but Linda was relentless. She told him about the messages, about his ultimatum, leaving nothing out. Each word was a knife, and with each accusation, Richard's mask slipped further. Linda, hi, I didn't mean, he began, but his excuses fell flat. Linda wasn't buying it, and neither was I. No more lies, Richard, Linda said, her voice firm. This time, there are consequences. The tension in the room was palpable as Richard and Linda faced off, each standing on either side of the desk that had been a symbol of Richard's power. Linda, armed with the truth, had him cornered. It's over, Richard, Linda began, her voice steady. Your betrayal, your games, I won't tolerate them any longer. But Linda and I, Richard tried to interject, but Linda held up a hand to silence him. I own the majority shares in this company, Richard. I allowed you to manage it out of respect for our marriage for our children. But you've abused that privilege. A silence fell over the room, punctuated only by Richard's shallow, panicked breathing. You're fired, Richard, Linda said, her words crisp and clear. As in today, you no longer work here. Richard reeled back as though slapped. You can't do that, he shouted, his voice echoing off the office walls. Linda raised an eyebrow at him. I just did. But, my shares, our shares, he stammered, his desperation apparent. Your shares, Linda sneered. No, Richard, those are my shares. I worked for them while you played around. I'm taking back control. Stunned, Richard could only gape at Linda. It was as if he couldn't comprehend the turn of events, how the tables had flipped so swiftly. He had gone from being the one in power, threatening to ruin my life, to the one with everything to lose. Looking at Linda, I felt a swell of admiration. She was not only taking control of her own life, but also saving me from a terrible fate. It was a revenge fitting of the man who had tried to manipulate us. He was tasting his own bitter medicine. Linda looked at me, her gaze filled with gratitude and admiration. Thank you, she said, you were brave enough to expose Richard, and that's not something I'll easily forget. I swallowed, taken aback by her appreciation. I, I was just trying to do the right thing. Well, you've done more than that. You've helped me see the truth, she said. And for that, you deserve a reward. I don't need a reward, Linda, I said quickly. I had not done this for a reward. I had done it to protect my family. No, I insist, she said firmly, you have been under Richard's tyranny for long enough. It's high time someone recognized your dedication to this company. With that, she stood, her demeanor suddenly shifting from the vengeful wife to the authoritative head of the company. As my first act back in the company, I'm promoting you, she announced. I gaped at her, words escaping me. Linda, I. No need for words, she said, waving a hand dismissively. You deserve this. Your hard work and loyalty should be rewarded. I just wish I'd seen Richard's true color sooner. As I exited the office, still in shock from the turn of events, I saw Richard from the corner of my eye. His face was a mask of regret and shame, a stark contrast to the arrogant man who had been ready to ruin my life for his desires. He was the epitome of a man who had lost everything due to his own actions, his own arrogance. I allowed myself a small smile. It was a harsh lesson, but one he had brought upon himself. As I walked away, I felt a weight lifting from my shoulders. 
My job was secure, my family was safe, and the man who had sought to destroy us was left with nothing but regret.